Firefighter injured. He is being treated at San Francisco General and should be okay. Um, right now, the fire is probably 90%, 90% contained. We have stopped the forward progress uh, and um, uh, we're just going to be on scene for quite a while longer, for several days most likely. It is still under investigation. We do not have a cause or origin at this time. And we know that approximately six buildings were involved. Thank you. Thank you. Now introducing to speak about the damage to the Sheriff's Department building, Sheriff Paul Miyamoto. Hi, good morning, everyone. I just want to start by saying publicly uh, how grateful we are to our fellow public safety uh, agency with the fire department coming here and responding in the manner that they did. As you, as you all well know, this has been a very large response in regards to uh, what happened here. The sheriff's office actually has our field operations headquarters in the building, one of the buildings that was affected by this fire, as well as our planning and projects division and a significant amount of our administrative functions uh, operating out of that building. And thanks to the efforts of the fire department and the collaboration with the police department and other city agencies, uh, the coordinated effort led to uh, minimal damage to our building and our resources that we have staged there. Uh, the wonderful news that we got from the fire department was that they were able to aggressively attack the fire and with the resources provided, uh, were able to uh, not just protect the resources, but in a timely manner, make sure everybody was out uh, and protected from getting injured from the fire. So we're very grateful to the fire department for what they've done here. Uh, this is a great example of coordinated efforts between city response to something of the magnitude of the fire that we've all witnessed here. And again, I want to say thank you to Chief Nicholson and her staff for the work that they did here. Thanks. Thank you. To reiterate what we stated earlier, this is a fifth alarm fire, bringing 160 San Francisco firefighters and roughly 75 to 100 law enforcement partners, as well as members of the Emergency Department of Management and the American Red Cross to facilitate care to those temporarily displaced and to provide assistance to the business owners and to the employees moving forward. At this time, as the chief stated, this fire is roughly 90% contained. We still have active spots of fire. If you look at the San Francisco Fire Department Twitter site at SFFDPIO, we did a full walk around about a half hour ago of this incident, showing you what our firefighters were confronted with and are currently confronted with to make sure that we fight this fire with the number one priority, life safety and property safety, which I believe we have accomplished today. We currently have one firefighter injured that will be okay. We have no community members injured. I wanna publicly thank our law enforcement partners for providing us with a safe and secure area to operate and providing humanitarian care to those affected and to the community around us as this incident evolved. American Red Cross for assisting us with the Displacement uh, and Recovery Center, which is currently at 1745 Folsom Street, and a care and rehab facility for all public servants working on this, which is currently at South Van Ness and 14th Street. We could not have accomplished what we have accomplished now and in the past without the overwhelming support of our community members. So again, I want to thank our community, San Francisco Strong, for standing with us, listening to us by avoiding the area and supporting us during this event. We will recover from this event. We will have future updates on this incident as they evolve. We do not have a scheduled presser moving forward. Please follow us on our Twitter site, at SFFDPIO, for any future uh, media presser related to this event. Any questions for... Yeah, the, the question is, is what businesses and what addresses are affected? At this time, this is still a fluid incident. It's still very active fifth alarm fire. Our partners at the Department of Emergency Management 
are looking at the businesses affected and we will be reaching out to each one of those businesses individually to start the process of recovery with them. At this time, we do not have a solid confirmed list of the confirmed addresses or business names for you. We will have those at a future time. I see some auto body shop. Do you have any hazmat concerns? The question was, we saw that there was an auto body shop. Were there or are there hazmat concerns? The answer is yes. Whenever we have an auto body shop, commercial buildings, that is one of the items that we think about, we plan for, we train for. In this circumstance, we did have items such as propane tanks uh, explode. We have oil, we have gasoline. These are all areas that we were made aware of through pre-established connections and partnerships with these businesses. And we were able to address them as we were confronted with them. So the question was whether or not this has affected our operations, and we've uh, been able to relocate all of our staff. We had a staging area out of Bill Graham, and we have identified locations for them to continue to keep everyone safe and protected and to continue our operations. So we've had minimal effects on our ability to still perform the job. Absolutely. So the question was what the facility is and what it does for the sheriff's office. We've been here and we've been a partner in this community now for about 20 years. Uh, we've been located at this site. It currently houses uh, the headquarters location for our field operations. So all of the sheriff units that are out working in the field at the hospital and at the different locations that we protect and provide patrol services to, this is the headquarters location for that. We also have our planning and projects division and some of our administrative functions out of this location as well. The question is, is the, the dynamics around getting water to the fire. Um, for this fire, we quickly um, basically uh, met our capacity for a municipal water system. San Francisco prides itself on having redundant systems to fight fires to provide assistance during disasters, one of those being our auxiliary water supply system. We were able to, to utilize that all the way to our Twin Peaks location, bringing millions of gallons of water down to our high pressure hydrants to supply our apparatus to put this, this fire out. Now the difference between an auxiliary water system and municipal water system is the auxiliary water system is not going to tap on our municipal needs, our drinking water, our bathing water. That's in the municipal system. So the water that we're, for the majority of the duration of this fire utilizing, is going to be that auxiliary water supply system. Any other questions? So the question is, is I saw some brown water coming out of some of the fire hose. That would be consistent of that system. Is drawing from that system is gonna be coming from uh, you know, lakes and large reservoirs where, again, it is non-potable water. Any other questions? Great. So the question is, is how long do we expect closures to be in effect? Um, I'm going to give an estimate that we are going to probably have operations throughout the evening tonight as to the scope of what will be closed will be later determined. We will be giving a media update at this location at 12.30 today, we just got that confirmed. So at 12.30 today, at this location, we will give you an update. We will try to have the uh, questions that were given to us, such as the addresses and the business names and how long and what will be impacted. Um, until then, we will be concluding this briefing. Thank you for your time.